Hello class! Today we are going to talk about trigonometry. I know you've all been looking forward to it, and here it is. So, trigonometry is the study of angles and triangles. And mostly what we're going to be looking at is right triangles, okay? We're just going to do the basic stuff. And what we're going to be talking about a lot is this lovely word here, Sokatoa. Alright? Sokatoa which means absolutely nothing. Well, it means something. It's a nice little remark. It helps us remember some things. Okay. Now, what we're going to be dealing with all the time in trigonometry is ratios of the sides of a right triangle. Okay. And there are six ratios. We are only going to be dealing with three of them. All right. Just three basic ratios, and those ratios are sine, cosine, and tangent. All right. Sine, cosine, tangent. Those are the three ratios that we are going to be looking at. All right. And this is going to tell us what that Sokotoa thing is. All right. So the first ratio, what this is, this is a ratio of the side lengths. Okay. All of these are looking at the side lengths. We're going to be looking here at sine. And we abbreviate sine with just those first three letters. Okay. S-I-N. This is not a sin. This is the sine. All right. So, what we have here, we have sine, all right? Sine is cosine and tangent. These are all looking at the angles, okay? Sine of an angle, we're going to look at the sine of angle A. So, sine of angle A equals, okay, so we're here at sine, and we have OH, so, okay? The OH, what this does, this tells us which legs we're going to, uh, which sides of the triangle we're going to look at to get this ratio. O stands for opposite. Opposite. All right, so we want the side opposite angle A. So opposite angle A would be right over here. Opposite. Okay. H. H stands for hypotenuse, right? Hypotenuse, which would be this right here, across from the right angle, right? Hypotenuse, right? Hypotenuse. And this is the sine of angle A. So, for example, if CB had a length of 7 and AB had a length of 10, the sine of angle A would be 7 over 10. That's it. That's all it is. Nothing complicated, okay? So we're going to look at the next ratio now. Also looking at the sides. This one is called cosine, as we said before. We're going to again abbreviate with the first three letters. All right? We're now in the ka portion of that Sokotoa. So cosine. Right? Cosine, again, we're looking at angle A. So cosine of angle A equals, it's not going to be opposite over J. So what we want here is A. A stands for adjacent, adjacent, is it? adjacent over, let's see here first, adjacent, now one thing, now you notice we've got two sides of the triangle that are adjacent next to angle A, what this stands for is always going to be this leg, okay, so this leg of the right triangle is adjacent, adjacent, there we go. adjacent, because the other side that's next to angle A, that is the hypotenuse. And that's what this H stands for, just like it stood for hypotenuse up there. So, hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. Ah. So, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. All right? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. All right. So if AC was 9 and AB was, I don't know, 11, then the cosine would be 9 over 11, adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay? That's so. Ka brings us down here to Toa. Toa, the T, is going to stand for tangent, which we're going to abbreviate with T A N. All right? So tangent, again, we're just going to look at angle A just to get this set up. Tangent of angle A, well, now we have OA, OA, right? 
OA is going to stand for the same thing O and A stood for up here, which is opposite and adjacent. So what we're going to have here is opposite over adjacent, where the opposite, that is, cross the triangle, the opposite leg, opposite over the adjacent leg. Not the adjacent side, because hypotenuse is also adjacent side, but adjacent leg. Always looking at the adjacent leg. Adjacent. All right. And there it is. And those are the three ratios for trigonometry. There are three others, but we're not going to deal with them today. All right. So, sine, cosine, tangent, socatoa. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Now, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do a couple examples here. A little example problems. Let's take a look here. So we are going to find the sine of angle A and the sine of angle B. Notice the angle is always going to be listed here. Okay, you can't just say find the sine. Okay, that's a lot like saying find the square root. Square root of what, right? So you have to have that angle there. You can't just say find the sine. You have to say find the sine of angle A, find the sine of angle B. Which one are we looking for? All right. So let's start with angle A. So angle A is what I'm looking for, and that is right there. Okay, so I'm going to jot this down so I'm not flipping back and forth. Remember, sine of some angle is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, right? Okay, so sine of angle A, I need opposite over hypotenuse. Well, the opposite of A, be all the way across here, that is 6 over the hypotenuse of the triangle, which is right here. Hypotenuse is 10. So the sine of angle A is 6 tenths. Remember, you don't want to leave it like that, of course. You always want to simplify it. So this would be 3 fifths. All right. Nice and easy. Now let's find the sine of angle B. All right. So angle B is right here. Again, we want opposite over hypotenuse. It's not really necessary to label them, but I'm going to just because. So opposite angle B is right there. 8. Opposite angle B. And the hypotenuse is the same hypotenuse. 10. So 8 tenths, which reduces to 4 over 5. Now notice, the sine of an opposite of angle A is not the same as the opposite of angle B, is it? Those are different, which is why I'm not labeling them as opposite, because it is only the opposite for angle A. It's not the opposite for everything. Hypotenuse, that's the hypotenuse for both triangles. Okay, But this is why it is very important to have that angle there, because the opposite over hypotenuse is different depending on which angle you're looking at. Right? All right. So let's take a look at cosine. Find the cosine of A, cosine of B. Again, I'm going to write this down real quick. So, ah, not sine. Cosine of some angle is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Right? Co ka, C A H. Adjacent over hypotenuse. So let's see what we have. Cosine of angle A. Where's angle A? There's angle A. And so we want adjacent, which is going to be the one right next to it, this leg. So that would be 16 over hypotenuse, which is this one here. Hypotenuse would be 20. Again, that does simplify. So we want to simplify this. It's both divisible by 4, so that would be 4 over 5. All right, and there's that. So, not too bad, right? Easy stuff. Let's take a look at B, cosine of angle B. Let's see, B is right there. We're going to want adjacent over hypotenuse. So, adjacent over hypotenuse. So, the adjacent leg is 12, and the hypotenuse is 20. Again, this does simplify, so we end up with 3 over 5. All right. So, cosine, we want the adjacent leg over the hypotenuse. And again, 
adjacent is different depending on which angle we're looking for, right? 12 is adjacent to B, but 16 is the leg adjacent to A. So you got to know which angle it is you're looking at in order to get this done. So it's very important to have that angle there. All right, let's see here. Tangent. So I'm going to write my ratio down real quick. Tangent of some angle, theta, is equal to opposite over adjacent, right? Toa. Ah, so let's see what we got here. We'll look at tangent of angle A. Okay, so tangent is opposite over adjacent. So I'm looking at angle A. The leg opposite angle A is 15. The leg adjacent to angle A, yet not the hypotenuse, the leg that's adjacent to angle A is 20. We're going to simplify this, both divisible by 5, and we end up with 3 fifths. Right? Oh, no, it's not 3 fourths, sorry. 3 fourths. That's better. All right. So let's look at B, tangent of B. So we're opposite of B. Opposite of B is right there. That's 20. And we want the leg adjacent to B, which is 15. There it is. Notice, both of these just use the legs, right? Tangent, doesn't matter which angle you're looking at. Tangent, just use the legs. Don't even need the hypotenuse. Don't need it for tangent. All right? Also notice, tangent of the different angles are just reciprocals of each other. Because the angle opposite B is adjacent to A, sorry, the side opposite angle B is adjacent to A, and the leg opposite angle A is adjacent to angle B. And so they're just backwards. All right, let's take a look at this, see what we can use this for, because these are actually pretty useful. Um, what this lets us do is find the measures of all the sides of a triangle if we only know one side. Before, we could only do this if it happened to be a special right triangle, right? Either the 45-45s or the 30-60-90s, right? With cosine, tangent, sine, all with these, we can do this using any angle. As long as we have one side and one angle, we can solve this. Right? Now, very important, we're going to use our calculator. And your calculator, see, calculator must be in degrees in degrees okay there are two actual ways you can measure angles one of them is degrees and one of them is radians and a lot of calculators will default into radians which is no good because again all of our angles are in degrees so we need a calculator being degrees. okay now i don't can't help you with every calculator but if you have a ti what you can do is hit mode and come down here to versus radians arrow over degrees hit enter and now your, your calculator will be in degrees, and we can use our calculator for this. All right. So what we're going to do, we need to find the lengths of BC and the length of AC, right? Well, we're over here in the sine section, so we will do the first one with sine, okay? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. We have angle B. We are looking for side AC, which is opposite angle B. And we do have the hypotenuse, so we can solve for this missing side, this opposite side, right? So, I'm just going to set this up. Sine of angle B is equal to opposite of angle B, which is AC, over the hypotenuse, which is AB. All right? Plug in the numbers that we know. So, we have sine of... 21 degrees equals AC, don't know what that is, over AB, which is 9. All right. So we want to solve this. We want to get AC by itself. So we're going to multiply by this 9, times 9, times 9, and we end up with 9 sine of 21 degrees equals AC. So we got to know what the sine of 21 degrees is. And we'll just stick this all straight into the calculator. So we turn this on. We have 9 sine 21 degrees is approximately 3.23. Okay. 
Notice this is a great big long hideous decimal and they almost all will be. All right, almost all of these are going to be these lovely decimals are going to have to be rounded off. All right, so I now know the approximate length of AC. Now that I know that, how can we find BC? Well, you got a couple of things you could do. All right? We could use the cosine of BC. We could use Pythagorean theorem, right? I've got one side, I've got two sides, I'm just looking at the third side. But we really don't want to do that because this number is rounded. And as you know, if you round a number off and then you start squaring it, then it just gets even more off, right? So you don't want to use a number that was rounded if you don't have to, okay? So what we're going to do is I'm going to do sine of angle A. But wait, we don't know angle A. Not sure we do. We've got two acute angles and it's the right triangle, so these two acute angles here must add up to 90 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 90 minus 21, which equals 9, and that's a 9, that's a 6. 69 degrees, right? Angle A is 69 degrees because these two have to add up to 90. So, here we go. Sine of angle A equals opposite of angle A, which is BC, over the hypotenuse, which is AB. Plug in the numbers that we know, and the sine of 69 degrees is equal to BC, don't know what that is, so it's still just BC, over AB, which I know to be 9. Solve this just like we solved that one, right? we got to multiply by that 9, times 9, times 9, and so we have 9 times the sine of 69 degrees equals BC. So let's see what that equals. What that is for that. Okay, so 9 times the sine of 69 is approximately 8.40. So 8.40 is the approximate length of side BC. And those are the answers. All right? So not bad, right? Really pretty easy stuff. You know, trigonometry sounds all big and scary, but it's really not, is it? Okay, so now let's take a look at this one. Okay, so we're looking for AB and BC in this triangle. All right. We're in the ka section here, so cosine. So we're, let's use cosine. I have angle C, all right, and cosine would be adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent would be BC, which I do want to find. So cosine of angle C is equal to adjacent BC over hypotenuse, hypotenuse, which is AC. AC. Hypotenuse is right here. Hypotenuse. All right. So let's plug in the numbers that we know. Cosine of C, C is 37 degrees. Equals BC, which I don't know what that is. So BC over AC, which is 13. Okay. Need to solve this for BC, which means i got to get rid of that 13. I'm dividing by 13, so I'm going to multiply to get rid of it. And that's how you undo division. And so we end up with 13 cosine of 37 degrees equals BC. So let's see what we get there. 13 cosine of 37 degrees is approximately 10.38. Okay, so 10.38 is approximate length of BC. All right, like so. Okay, so now let's take a look at this next one here. Let's see, this could be a different color. All right, so there's BC. So we got some options. We could, of course, use Pythagorean theorem, but again, that was rounded, so I don't want to use that number because when I square it, it's going to make it off even more. Now, I am looking for AB. Well, AB is opposite the angle that I have, so I could find angle A and do cosine again, or I could just use sine because that's used opposite. I know the hypotenuse, so let's just use sine. All right? 
sine of angle C equals AB over hypotenuse, which is AC. Plug in the numbers I know. And so sine of 37 degrees equals AB over 13. Again, I want to get rid of that 13. So times 13 times 13. And so what we have now is 13 sine of 37 degrees equals AB. So let's see what that equals. 13 sine of 37 degrees, right? right. Is approximately 7.82. So 7.82 is the approximate length of segment AB. All right. So you see you have options on how you do this, okay? Which is always nice to have options. Okay, so now we're looking at tangent. Tangent to a uh, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So looking at angle C, I have opposite. There's adjacent, so that can work here to find this opposite one because I have one of the sides. Uh, so tangent of angle C is equal to the opposite, which is AB, over the adjacent, which is BC. Plug in the, letter, the numbers that I know, and so we have tangent of 50 degrees equals AB, I don't know what that is, over 20. Again, just multiply by that 20. 20 is on the bottom. We want to get rid of it. Times 20 times 20. And so that gives me 20 times the tangent of 50 degrees equals AB. So let's see here. We have 20 tangent 50 degrees is approximately 23.84. 23.84 is the approximate length of AB. All right, there it is. Now, we have to find, what are we looking for? That's the opposite, let's say B. Now we need BC, right? Well, hmm. BC is, or sorry, AC. AC is the hypotenuse. We can't use tangent. Tangent is not going to help us because tangent doesn't deal with hypotenuse. So we need something that deals with the hypotenuse. We could do Pythagorean theorem, but again, we don't want to use this number because it's rounded. We could use opposite over hypotenuse, but again, we don't want to use this number because it's rounded. So we are going to use adjacent over hypotenuse, which is cosine. All right, so we are going to do cosine of angle C is adjacent CB over hypotenuse, which is AC. Let's plug in the numbers we know. So cosine of 50 degrees is equal to CB, 20, over AC, which I don't know. Now you'll notice this one's slightly different, isn't it? Here we have the variable in the denominator, which that's no big deal. We just have to get it out of the denominator. So we're going to multiply by AC times AC, which gives me AC cosine of 50 degrees equals 20. But that's not what I want, right? I want to get AC by itself. So how do we do that? Wait for the bell to stop ringing. There we go. What we're going to do is we are going to divide by the cosine of 50 degrees. Divide by cosine 50. So what that gives us is that AC is equal to 20 divided by the cosine of 50 degrees. All right. So let's put that in our calculator here. We have, what was it? 20 divided by cosine 50, which is approximately 31.11. So AC is approximately, what was it? 31.11. Now, just to review real quickly, all of this is going to come back to Sokotoa. All right? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. 
tangent is opposite over adjacent, okay? Look at the side you have, look at the side you want. Is that going to be the opposite of hypotenuse? Which two sides are those? Which ratio uses those two sides, all right? If you just want the ratio, it's easy enough. Just put the side over the side, side over the side, side over the side. All right. Now, when you go to solve these, if the variable that you don't know is on the top, you're going to multiply your ratio, your cosine, your trig ratio, by whatever number is on the bottom. If the number that you're looking for, your variable, is on the bottom, you are going to divide the number that you want, or the number that you have, rather, by the trig ratio. Okay, so if it's on the, if your variable is on the top, you're going to multiply. If your variable is on the bottom, you're going to divide. All right, and that is trigonometry. Hopefully, you found that useful, and I'll see you in the next video.